and welcome to this week's edition of Bison Talks Impact. I'm here today post anniversary, and I tell you what, I'm going solo because I've got some serious thoughts about this show. What a great show. What a great show. anniversary 2020. Let's go. Okay, so anniversary. What a great night. You know, I enjoyed... Uh, I enjoyed joining in on the watch party with the T and I guys. Um, we had a great, we had a great time, a lot of fun. Um, we enjoyed some of the great surprises on the show. Uh, yeah, you know, and I'm and I'm really pleased to see a lot of the T and I fan base joining in, getting involved, posting some interesting theories and some questions for the team. Um, it, it was really cool, and, and it, you know, I think that uh, I think we should do that for every single pay per view. So roll on, bang for glory, I say. Let's do it again. Um, for me, it was a bit of a late night because the show didn't start till one a.m. But you know, I I tried to get an hour's kip um, in the evening, uh, even if it was more you know just a bit of a snooze on the sofa, uh, just to get myself prepared for the show. Uh, must admit, towards the end, I was uh, starting to get a little bit tired. Um, but um, it was a great show. It really was a great show. So let's get into it. Let's get into talking about. Slammiversary 2020. Let's talk about what an amazing cold opening that was. Um, I think John Burton did an amazing job with the, the as the news reporter on there, which was fantastic. Um, uh, John was on the uh, TNI show uh, preview show, which was uh, which aired, I believe, the the Tuesday night after uh, Impact on Access. Um, obviously, giving us a bit of an insight of what he's been up to as part of the uh, build to Slamversary, which was, uh, let's face it, it was probably the most badass build that we've had to uh, to uh, to uh, an Impact pay per view in many years. Um, so kudos to the uh, to the Impact team. Uh, everyone seemed to get involved from the from the roster uh, through to people like John. Um, who were involved in the build-up. Uh, we even had, uh, you know, David LaGreca, people like that, Bully Ray, uh, some old-school TNA guys. They were, you know, even Dixie Carter was hyping up Slammiversary. Um, so it was one, you know, it was one hell of a build-up. We had, we had so much stuff going on. It was, uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was really nice to see. Um, I think as an Impact fan myself, and um, you guys on the fan base would probably uh, back me up on this. It's nice to see some hype build around anything related to impact, as a, you know, uh, as opposed to any negativity that we've had in the past, or you know, or we get some hype and it's it's not, you know, it doesn't live up to it or whatever, all that kind of stuff. So, um, and I certainly don't believe that this this pay per view didn't live up to the hype, that's for sure. So, yeah, we get the cold opening, we get the we get the uh, the news report, we get the show reel kind of thing. Um, still teasing, you know, some some incredible talents. There was, you know, we saw what uh, amazing red James Storm, uh, EC3, um, you know, the Bulgarian flag, some Japanese flag. Um, you know, there was there was Leo Rush, I think, was on there. Bully Ray, uh, Ken Anderson. There was there was there was loads of people. EY was on was on the promo. We we already know EY was coming in. Um, we've had all the hints. Uh, with, with regards to EY, and I think we knew. Obviously, the Good Brothers. We then had, uh, obviously, pre Samverse, it was like midnight or something of uh, the 18th. Um, uh, we had the announcement that the uh, the Good Brothers, Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson, um, had definitely signed a contract with Impact Wrestling, um, which, of course, led to, oh, my God, what are they going to do on the show type scenario. So the hype was there. It was built. We were all ready um, to either be elated or disappointed. Uh, thank God it was uh, it wasn't the the latter. Um, we have had our disappointments in the past, but I don't believe that this show was was that. I've got my thoughts on the end as well because I think that um, you know the 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 focus of this pay per view, even though it was hyped up by you know the surprises, I still believe 
the 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 focus was on the current roster talent and what they can do um, in the ring and what they what they you know what the skill set that they already have uh, the roster they already have um, and I still think the main focus was on that um, as opposed to necessarily who was coming in or the surprises and all that kind of stuff yes that was there but the actual show itself was a more of a a talent roster focus as opposed to the surprises so, well then, that's what I think and I hope that makes sense to you guys um, because I think that the, the 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 talent themselves put put out an incredible show um and i think anyone that hadn't been watching impact at this point they got hyped to watch this pay-per-view and thought my god you know what's going on the landscape's changing we need to watch it you know we don't want to miss out on this this is going to be great um i think they got surprised probably at how good um the talent roster already is um you know within the within the impact promotion so um, that's what I'm. That's what I hope, and I and I think they they did a really good job of showcasing that too. So I'm I'm you know I was hyped um, for the show already. So you know once that 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 promo was done, that sort of kind of cold entrance was done. You know we get straight in there and we're hit with the which is the to be fair which is the match we were expecting, but we get hit with the rascals. Um, open invitation. Now, you know, there's low, there was loads of speculation out there. You know, as soon as the Good Brothers especially had been announced, it was, oh, it's going to be the Good Brothers, going to be the Good Brothers. First thing I said, Motor City Machine Guns, you know, basically because I think that if they, if they had put the Good, the good Brothers in that, then it would have been a squash match. And the Rascals don't deserve that. The Rascal needed to be showcased. They're an incredible team. You know, they're fast. You know, they work well together. They got an, an, a very athletic mindset. They're an incredible tag team and they needed to be showcased. So out come the Motor City Machine Guns. They are awesome. They are back. Alex Shelley was looking ripped. Um, Chris Saban was looking ripped and they were both like, they both look, to be fair, they didn't look any older, you know? I mean, yeah, maybe a little bit, but, you know, to me, it just looked like Motor City Machine Guns of old. They looked incredible. They come out, they come out there, we get an incredible match. You know, let's face the facts. It was fast-paced. We got loads of offense in from the Rascals, really showcasing those guys' talent and abilities. We got a great you know, a great set of mindset coming from um, Motor City Machine Guns showing that those guys haven't lost a step. They were they were just as fast. They were just as agile. They were just as athletic as they always have been. They were not a disappointment. They were absolutely incredible. And I, for one, was popping all over the place for those bad boys. Yeah, Motor City Machine Guns, fantastic fantastic addition to the impact roster no matter how long it's going to be even if it's only say you know for a couple of months or you know leading up to bang for glory and they're, they're you know i don't really care whatever time that these guys we get is going to be gold gold all the way it's going to be fantastic wrestling so can you imagine i'll tell you what i'm, I'm really excited because motor city machine guns versus tjp falabar I'm just going to leave that one there because I'm telling you that would be one hell of a match. That's definitely a match that I want to see on a Tuesday night. Well, Wednesday morning for me. Uh, Access TV, fight uh, Impact Plus for me. Uh, that's going to be an incredible, um, incredible matchup if and when that happens. I'm telling you, amazing match. Um, now, yes, eventually we see uh, Motor City Machine Guns win against the rascals now i think that was inevitable i'm pretty sure that that was going to work that was going to happen straight you know from the stop that was going to happen there's no point in bringing motor city machine guns in and then they lose straight off the bat because then that would be the end of it well there's nothing that where, where are they going to go they come in you know they fight one of the uh well they fight a team which effectively is lost to the north several times now um, and then they lose to them so what would be the point in carrying them on that sort of you know so they had to win. We knew they were going to win. They had to win because there'd be nowhere to go otherwise. So they win the match. But in that same process, they ensured that we got to see an incredible, you know, incredible match um, from two really awesome teams. You know, 
they went away saying, you know, the Rascals are the future of Impact Tag Team Wrestling, and they were great. And I'm telling you now, it, the Rascals will eventually be um, Impact Tag Team Champions. It's just not their time yet. Similar how I feel about Ace, but we'll get to that later. Um, yeah, incredible match. Some incredible moves. Des and Wentz were, were awesome. I would imagine it for them, um, you know, it probably was quite a dream match for them. They they probably they probably grew up on on Motor City Machine Guns um, on, on TNA. So to get uh, the opportunity to get in the ring with them probably was uh, yeah was one one hell of a one hell of a thing for them. So um, yeah, kudos to them. You know, absolutely uh, fantastic match. I was I was really really impressed. And and let's face it, they definitely. Um, they're definitely back. They definitely are a team to be reckoned with. So, um, yeah, they haven't lost a step, guys. They have not lost a step. So, um, yeah, nothing more. I, I just, you know, I, I'm putting that in a, you know, if you were to star that match, it was a four-star match. It was a great match. Um, really, really enjoyed it. Um, we then got some very enthusiastic um, Josh, uh, Josh and Don Callis, didn't we? Um, you know, very enthusiastic, giving us some information on the car to come. Um, and I think, you know, uh, I'd actually miss Josh and Don a little bit. I think sometimes they, they, you know, they, they can get a little bit same-ish, um, you know, in, in the way that they sort of kind of, it's, it's almost like Josh is feeding uh, Don uh, sort of kind of, you know, so he can go Healy or, just feeding Don so he can make his sort of kind of negative comments or whatever it is he does, his sort of kind of heel style commentary. Um, so, but yeah, no, I, but I do enjoy them. I do enjoy listening to some of the stuff that comes out. Um, yeah, so we got very, very enthousi enthusiastic time from those guys. Um, we then get the cold build into the TNA, um, uh, TNA championship match, obviously, uh, which is Dreamer versus Moose. Now, and it's uh, old school rules. Now, old school rules to me, it is in reality is it, supposed to be, I would say, a, a classic, you know, one pin to a finish match. Um, I think old school rules to Tommy Dreamer clearly is ECW hardcore. Um, so it, it, you know, it was more of a sort of street fight style hardcore, hardcore match. Um, we saw some incredible stuff. I mean, Moose is so athletic. Um, and when he, you know, just his entire entrance, the way he comes in, you know, the cold, uh, you know, the cold entrance basically straight into uh, straight into everything that's that's, that's going to happen. You get, you know, you get the 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 moose music hit, you know, the light in. He stood there looking like a star. Um, comes down to the ring, you know, wearing obviously some again some brand spanking new ring attire, um, displaying the new strap for the new belt and how beautiful does that belt look with the white strap on it and i think the other thing is is it it clearly now differentiates the tna strap from the uh impact straps which are clearly all black so we've got all black straps now uh, we've got the white strap on the tna title so i'm starting to think that if they do reintroduce the tna um, knockouts tag titles then obviously you know they were originally on a white strap so i'm assuming they'll come out on a white strap so what we'll get is uh tna straps will have uh you know belts will have the white strap and the impact belts are obviously going to have the the black strap um again you know i do want to mention that uh we got obviously brand spanking new uh, titles. I think they were the ones that were originally to be made for the Access TV era when it all went to red and everything else. I think the previous ones they literally just took the old titles, painted the red in, etc. You know, over the over over the blue, just to sort of kind of you know make do until these new ones were to be introduced. Obviously, um, I, I'm assuming they were probably always set to introduce some versus. I'm not sure, but. Um, I think it would have been a great time anyway, regardless, to to introduce the new belts. So, um, yeah, so the new belts looked amazing um, the, with the white strap. Looked incredible. Looks great, obviously, around Moose's waist, as it always does. Um, but then we get into the match, you know, and we get some great stuff. Athletic moves, you know, coming from from the uh, six foot seven uh, Moose, which sometimes don't expect. But what I'm going to say in this one is, you know, I, 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 you know, I'm down 
with a bit of uh, Tommy Dreamer. I do, I do like Tommy Dreamer, and I think he has got something to offer. I'm not sure if he still has something to offer as a pay per view talent. I don't think I want to see Dreamer coming out and and you know taking a spot away from you know some of the younger guys for a pay per view. Um, you know, I get the way that they built it. You know, he's he's sort of kind of like that final old school TNA ECW type character they needed to. Uh, Moose to sort of kind of finish off to then move on, move him on to 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 newer pastures, I guess, and fresher meat. Um, but I just think that, uh, that that I don't know. I I don't really want to see Tommy Dreamer uh, uh, on pay per views. I'm going to say that. Um, I think he's still got he's got so much to offer the promotion. You know, don't get me wrong. His backstage stuff is great. You know, and I think this is. I mean, it's twofolds really. Um, you know, he can go. I mean, the guy can go. There's no doubt about it. He could still go. But, you know, I've seen Tommy Dreamer matches. I've seen them, uh, uh, you know, in his prime. I don't want to see him now. You know, I want to remember him when he was in his prime, um, when he was when he was a true, uh, when he was a true badass. But let's face the facts. He did hold his own. He held his own in this match. You know, there were times when I thought, oh, my God, they're going to put Tommy over on him, uh, over on Moose. You know, they, they, that's what they're going to do. Um, but they didn't. Um, so you know we got we got a pretty impressive match. I mean we got some we got some great stuff. Uh, use it, use of dustbins and dustbin lids and kendo sticks that were uh, I don't know wrapped in some sort of kind of gold tape. Obviously, uh, but that, I mean it was it, you know it was a solid match. You know this was probably also a match. I think a lot of people were expecting the surprise. You know we were you know people were like oh this is where EC3 is going to come out and say that belongs to me kind of thing. Um all that kind of stuff, you know. Um I actually didn't think so. I th- I thought that this was yeah, this was just going to be the way it was because I think if you're going to bring back someone like EC3 um, then the reality is you don't want to be bringing him back in a TNA storyline. You want to be bringing him back on your on your main, you know, Impact World Championship. You know, which at the end of the day, regardless of of what Moose says, um, the sanctioned world title on Impact TV is the Impact World Championship. So, you know, the right thing to do would be to bring him in involved in that. Um, so. Okay, so we get that. We get a Moose eventual win, you know, and let's face the facts, he in the end he he, he proper overpowered Tommy Dreamer. He really showed him what, what heart he had and, and and showed him that, you know, he truly is the man to be carrying that belt. So, you know, as far as I'm concerned, that was great. Um so yeah, so you know, incredible match. And Moose, let's face the facts, Moose looked incredible. So again, what we're seeing is a incredible match from an incredible um, impact wrestling roster talent. Um, and Tommy Dreamer definitely put Moose over as as a true uh, a true badass in that ring. And he really was. Um, I, th- I think, you know, I'm really looking forward to seeing where this goes. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, like a, a EY getting involved possibly, with this whole sort of kind of TNI scenario, uh, sorry, TNA scenario would be, um, would be quite interesting. Um, but you know, let's see how that sort of pans out. You know, we, we don't know. We just, we you know, the, the beauty of this era at the moment in 2020 of impact is that we, you know, it is full of surprises. We don't really know where people are going with this. Um, and I think that is what is drawing people's attention as well. They're starting to really um, see how well impact builds their talent, how well they build their storylines, um, you know, and some of them are real slow burns as well. You know, I mean, this sort of moose thing has been going on for quite some time now, you know, like, not not necessarily him carrying the title, but this whole kind of like destroying anything from the past. I think that's what you need to that's you know, that's the intricacy of this of this storyline. It's not just about Moose carrying the so called fake TNA title. It's about him destroying the past. Um so, you know, when you see him, you know, taking on a rhino, beating Rhino, taking on, you know, Tommy Dreamer now, beating Tommy Dreamer, you know, taking on suicide, beating suicide beating Hernandez. He is beating, you know, Chase Stevens. He's beating the past. Everything that he's doing right now is he's destroying and beating the past TNA, right? That's what he's doing. So forget, you know, or even ECW, he's, he's destroying the past. So forget the fact he's carrying the belt. That's what he's doing. It's about, you know, that's what it's about. It's about destroying the past to create the future. Okay. So great storytelling, you know, and I'm really excited to see where this one goes. Um, we then get the knockouts gauntlet match. 
Um, you know, so we get the build, we get the cold build into that, which is great. And then we see uh, Tasha enter the ring, Tasha Steele. We get, uh, and then we get Kylie Ray um, join her. Lovely entrance as always. Big smiles. We love Kylie. Big smiles. So she enters the ring, um, and then we get the we get the we get the match kicking off. Um, we get some great to and fro from these guys. Some proper like what we what we come to expect from from you know two of the two of the latest knockout signings. Some really good crisp action. Um, both of the both of those talents are, in, are are superbly athletic in the ring. Um, and what I really love about the Kylie character is that when Kylie's in the ring, um, you know she is a, a legitimate badass. Um, her move set. Is 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 quick, fast, and hard hitting. I don't think she gets enough credit for that. Um, she's incredibly well versed in technical wrestling. She does all the holds. Um, you know, she gets involved in 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 sort of kind of submission stuff. Um, she's very athletic. You know, she's a very good at reversals um, and incredibly good at counter uh, counter attack as well. So. You need to, you know, you need you need to give her credit for all of that sort of stuff. Really, really good at that, you know, uh, really good. Um, we then get, which I, <laughs> I guess you could say was uh, uh, a joke, but you hear Tyre Ty Valkyrie's music hit, and out she comes, but it's not her. Uh, it turns out that uh, Johnny Bravo, because Tyre wasn't particularly impressed with coming out third in the Gauntlet match. Uh, uh, I don't know whether she sent him out or or he just decided to take her place. Um, I don't know. But anyway, so Johnny comes out um, and they make short work of him fairly quickly. But I thought his impression was quite funny and I really enjoyed that. I thought it was fun. It added that sort of kind of um, that fun aspect to to the Gauntlet match. It was I thought it was quite good. Um, obviously, you know, Johnny gets uh, gets eliminate, uh, eliminated fairly quickly via Tasha and Kylie. Kylie's all excited, wants to give Tasha the high five. And, of course, Tasha's not having none of that stuff. Um, so, you know, we start getting them off again. We then get Kimberly. And Kimberly, for me, is uh, has been one of the real um, bonuses to uh, you know to the to, I guess the 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 tapings that we've had over the last few months. Now, excuse me, I just need a quick drink. My voice is going a bit dry. I'm not stopped talking, am I? Right, here we go. So oh, lovely bit of voice. Lovely. So um so we get Kimberly. Now for me, Kimberly um has yeah, been a real breath of fresh air. She's an incredible talent. The moveset's great. And actually quite hard hitting. She's quite, you know, she's 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 a little bit short, but she's strong. Um, you know, uh, she's in, got amazing flexibility. Um, I, I looked somewhere, I think I read somewhere, she's got a bit of a dance background. So, um, you know, she's clearly got an amazing, she moves well. You know, she moves well. She's got um, incredible flexibility. Um, and actually, at the same time, she's quite strong, very athletic. So, you know, she's a, an incredible addition to to the Knockouts roster at the moment. Um, we haven't heard yet whether she is uh, officially signed, um, but... I'm hoping that she is. Um, it's just sort of kind of like, you know, that's just a formality. That it'll either come out that she's been signed to a deal um, or not. I, I, I don't know. But hopefully she's signed um, and we get to see her for, for quite some time to come because she is definitely a welcomed addition uh, to the roster. So we get a bit of that going on. We then get... Kira Hogan, who's obviously then going to start doing a little bit of, uh, you know, teamwork with Tasha, which is great. Susie comes in. Um, we then get our first surprise um, of of Katie Forbes. Now, you know, yes, yeah, she's already signed, but we haven't seen her for a while, and she wasn't announced as uh, as coming in. So um, that was good. Um, so she came in, you know hard hit in she's quite a big woman i mean you, i don't think you you, you sort of really realize how how tall and, and thick she is you know she's a big strong lass um so she came in she she threw through people around through a few moves um you know you see uh kira having a little bit of uh uh doing a a little bit of a jig with her getting the old bum wiggling and all that kind of stuff which was fun but katie had, had enough of that so took her out which was great um we then get madison um obviously introduced to the match coming out doing a bit of ass kicking showing why she's the uh the five times 
uh, knockouts champion, or is it 25 according to Don? I'm not sure, but I think it's five to be fair. So five time um, knockouts champion coming in, uh, doing incredibly well, showing off why she's the uh, why she is. Uh, so, you know why she is a five-time knockout champ. She's damn good. Um, then we get obviously um, Havoc coming in. She starts dominating. Um, you know, throwing people around all over the place, um, which was uh, which to be expected. Nice new ring attire, so she looked really good. Um, the only thing I'm going to say up to this point is that the women seem to. Um, they couldn't seem to keep the continuity going in this. So we had a couple of dead sections. We started to get a few dead moments coming in in this match, um, which was a little bit disappointing. It was almost like, you know, you know where you get those points where it's sort of like all of a sudden people disappear out the ring and you see two or three, you know, you see two people going at it for a few minutes. Uh, gives everybody a bit of a rest and all that. You didn't really get that. They were sort of kind of hanging out in the corners and it, I don't know, I think it got a little bit sort of congested. Um, shall we say in there with people that were just sort of kind of like you know on looking what was going on when what they should have been possibly is getting out of the way and if they were highlighting certain individuals at any given time that's what they needed to do I, I you know I guess it's difficult because the thing is to get eliminated they had to go over the top so there was so you could have gone under I guess you could have got out of the way under I don't know it's just, it's just my thoughts on that um, I, I certainly think we could have um maybe looked at doing something more there at that moment um but anyway so so it carried on you know like i say it was a little bit stop start a little bit stop start but we carried on um we then get uh, obviously tyre turn up uh she turns up in her in uh, her you know captain hook um style get up and uh, yeah look fantastic as she always does with her coat and, and all the rest of it looks great and of course now you know she comes in um, starts kicking ass, looking very, very dominant. You know, at the end of the day, she is the longest reigning knockout champion of all time. She's going to be, you know, she's going to get a strong show. And so she comes in and we get some, you know, we get some really hard hitting stuff again. Um, and then get Alicia join in not long after that. She comes out looking like Daisy Duke from the Dukes of Hazzard. Um, you know, she comes out. She's just like a little firecracker, isn't she, that Alicia? She's a firecracker. Um, anything is possible with that lady. So, you know, then we get Nevaeh turn up um, with a cracking new outfit. Uh, I think I think it was a great choice of the uh, of the gold outfit. I know on Twitter uh, earlier in the week she was talking about oh which outfit should I wear? I've wore this one, this one, that, and the other. And there was lots of people putting in their opinions and all this. But she was obviously going to wear something new. Um, and uh, what a great pick that was with the uh, the gold outfit. I really like that. So she comes out, and again she you know her and Havoc kind of hook up. So we're getting a bit of a pattern through the match as well is as these sort of kind of like, you know, alliances are, are coming together, they sort of kind of hook up and we get a little bit of action from those guys doing some t sort of teaming together. Um, so, yeah, again, a little hint, a little sort of corner foreshadowing as to where we might be going, where they're looking to create, you know, some kind of tag division. Um, you know, I, I think it's going to happen, but I think it's going to come from the TNA side of the brand. I think it's going to be the TNA knockouts uh, championship that they start going for, you know. Either way, it doesn't matter. It will be, be cool to have a tag division for the ladies. I think they deserve it. They've worked so hard and we have got one of the, you know, we have probably got the hottest um, ladies knockouts division um, on the planet today. And I think if you don't agree with that, pfft, whatever, um, you know, as far as I'm concerned, uh, one hell of a roster there. So, yeah, so we get Nevaeh, she's kicking some butt, teaming up with Havoc, that's great. Um, exactly what we expected. And then what do we get? Yes, Rosemary's music hits. Out comes Rosemary, looking incredible with a new again another new outfit. All the green stuff coming. Oh yeah, yeah, look great. And again, what would you expect? You know, she's gonna obviously tie up with Tyre. So we started getting some you know joint stuff going on there, which is wonderful to see. Um, and of course, then the mu uh, the the Rosemary music hits again. We get Johnny Bravo coming out this time, dressed up as as Rosemary, which is kind of weird. Um, some sort of face mask thing going on anyway very odd so he comes out he's he, i don't know i think it was, it was more like a, he should have put a screen mask on i think it would look more appropriate in what he was wearing and stuff but anyway um so he comes out uh obviously ty and Razor are like what what the what the hell what the fuck are you doing um so yeah then obviously you know um we get some eliminations going on with him um which is great uh kylie ray 
basically, um, you know, eliminates Havoc. Um, and she's like, oh, sorry, sorry, I didn't mean it. Oh, sorry. You know, and then we get all of that sort of stuff going on. The old nice smiley Kylie, strong style, um, love in life. Um, so we get all of that. Um, you know, we also get the, the, the Havoc. We will get uh, Madison Rain. Um, we miss the Susie elimination. Um, didn't see that. Didn't see it at all. Um, I actually went back and watched that match again. And no, it was it just never happened. It wasn't announced. I never saw it. So anyway, she just sort of kind of disappeared. So um, yeah, so Susie disappears, um, which was weird. Um, and then we are eventually left with Rosemary, Kylie and Tyre. And of course, we're all now thinking, OK, well, that's that's, you know, that's Kylie done. Um because those two obviously gonna gonna tag up kind of thing. They're gonna pair up on gang up on her, and of course they did. We then get to see Tyre accidentally putting Rosemary out by trying to sort of kind of lift out Kylie, and it just and then obviously Rosemary lost her grip and she was gone. So Rosemary was a bit upset with Tyre. What are you doing? And you get Tyre apologising and and all that kind of stuff. And then obviously we've there left with with Tyre, the longest reigning knockouts champion. And Kylie Ray, the Queen of Smile Style, and she is there. She is ready, and they go at it. This was great because you really, I mean, let's face the facts. Kylie's been in there from the start, from the very start of this match. Taya comes in, with, and she's still full of energy. She is still ready to go, that girl. She's ready for it. And, and we get some really good stuff from, from the pair of them um, going on at each other. And of course, you know, um, Eventually, um, eventually we get the Kylie win, um, which I think if that arena was uh, was full at that point, if there was a massive, that would have been probably one of the pops of the night because Kylie wins. She is now the number one contender for the Knockouts Championship, right? She is now the number one. So Whatever happens later with Deanna and, and, and Jordan, they've got a number one contender and it's Kylie Ray, And she's pleased. Oh, she's happy with that. And uh, I think it's great. Now, my thoughts on the, the match overall, I think it was, it, was a, it was a mixed match, really. I think it had some really good things. Um, but I also think it had a couple of moments where it was a bit cringeworthy. Um, I wasn't necessarily a massive fan of the the Johnny Bravo stints, um, but you know it was there. It was fun. Uh, it, it wasn't. Uh, you know, I I wouldn't have expected that. I was hoping to see, you know, maybe a Taylor Hendricks uh, not um, turn up Taylor Wilde maybe. Um, you know, maybe uh, maybe someone like Diamante. I don't know. I was expecting to see, or Tony Conti, maybe I don't know. I was expecting Kelly Klein, even. I was expecting to see a couple of of um, even Rachel Ellering actually thinking about it. Sorry, that one just popped in as well. Um, so I was hoping to see a couple of new knockouts turn up in that because um, I mean, you know, who's to say it had to be sort of twelve, thirteen period? It could have been, you know, fifteen, sixteen. It could, could have been as many as you liked. Um, but bottom line. You know, I think mixed opinion on the match. I enjoyed it. I thought that the the the, the five tag the five tag match on the on Impact the previous Tuesday was much much better um, than that. However, you know, it was still an enjoyable match. I still enjoyed it. Um, I, I you know I would put it in a three star category um, overall because it just had a couple of moments where it didn't quite it didn't quite gel. It didn't quite work, but I did enjoy it, and I was so pleased to see Kylie um Kylie come out on top which was which was pretty awesome um at that point we had some sound issues but we had a we had an in-ring promo from uh from Heath um well previously in a reincarnation up north uh Heath Slater um but I, I'm not sure I think he's going by Heath Miller or something I don't know if that's his real name or he's just going by Heath or whatever now um but he comes out he does a bit of a promo we start having some sound issues um I didn't quite catch everything that he was saying but obviously the the thing was that he's a free agent and all that kind of stuff um obviously you know we get Rohit come in we get uh, a two and fourth uh basically Heath destroys Rohit which for me is a bit of a shame because you know yes Rohit gets a gets a moment at the pay-per-view but um you know I don't know I don't know what this is leading to I guess um I hope that it's possibly leading to like almost like a, a reincarnation of Rohit into maybe his Hakim Zayn um uh character 
going forward. I don't know, but I, you know, one thing's for sure. I hate seeing Roe uh, lose. Uh, I'm, I'm a big fan of the guy, so um, you know. But you have to tear a character down before you can build them back up again, or you know, re recreate yourselves. For instance, I mean, if you're at top of your game, what's the point in re you know reinventing yourself? Because clearly you're at the top of the game. So let's let's just see how that all pans out. Um, so then we get that. So we get that Heath Liebers, and then obviously we get the the build into the next match, which is the X Division match, X Division Championship match with obviously Willie Mack, uh, Chocolate Thunder, and Chris Bay, the ultimate finesser. Um, you know, I've got to say, if you didn't catch my um, interview with Chris, um, it's definitely well worth a listen. Just go and check it out on the uh, on the TNI YouTube channel or on any of your podcast things. You got you know SoundCloud, Spotify, etc. Um, yeah, go and check it out. It's a, it's 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 a pretty good uh, it's a pretty good interview. And actually, you know, he predicts he's going to be the man moving forward. He's going to turn uh, X Division into the Finesse Division. So. Um, it's going to be interesting. That was that. So it's definitely an interesting, uh, interesting listen on where you know Chris sees himself. So uh, yeah, yeah, go and check that one out. But anyway, moving on. Uh, sorry, a bit of selfless promotion there. But anyway, moving on. Um, so what we got was quite frankly an amazing uh, match. Now for me, um, it's one of the matches of the night, if not the match of the night, um, in terms of the in reaction. Um, you know, Chris Bay is incredibly athletic. He's fast. He's quick. He's got like some great counter moves. It's almost like he can counter pretty much anything. Um, and I think he shows amazing aggression, ability, agility, everything you could think of um, that you would expect to see from a no limits X division wrestler. Um, you've got Willie Mack, bigger guy, strong, big, but can also move very agile again you know he is the definition of no limits x division right you know he really is it, and that's the thing if you look at it as a you know a weightless category it's not about um you know size it's about what you can do it's about no limits there is no limit to be in the x division and that's that's you know that's the bottom line people need to get away from this you know this whole kind of they need to be a bit smaller and fly around the ring like lunatic you know willie can do Pardon me. Willie can do that. He can fly around the ring. He is fast. You know, uh, he is strong. He high flies. He has no limits. The the guy, you know, is is again the epitome of um, an X division guy. You know, that's why he's champion. He's X division champion for a reason. Um, but what we get is some really amazing fast paced action from both guys. Chris Bay going at it. Um, then we get Willie Mack going at it, Chris Bay again, and we get this really great story. It's two in fro, you know, so everyone's getting their offense in. It's really quick. We get a bit of a moment which is a bit scary, and, and uh, I want to bring it up because um, I'm not sure whether whether uh, Chris sort of kind of hurt his neck in the match early on um, because, you know, there was a bit of a time where Willie was about to come out at him, you know, uh, some sort of suicide dive thing through the ropes and he was like moved away and he's like man time out big time he sort of kind of needed a couple of minutes to compose himself before he got back into the ring again now whether that was just you know that was just a storytelling moment it could have been um but i felt i think I, i'm pretty sure he hurt himself as the as the match went on i think it become clear that he was obviously you know he obviously hurt his 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 upper back area his neck area a little bit um you know hopefully nothing serious and i've not heard anything since so i'm assuming it wasn't um but we then saw that, that it sort of kind of slowed chris down a little bit um but you know and i think he was starting to be a little bit more careful but we did start to see quite a lot of stuff so this is where you think oh maybe it is storytelling because you then started to see quite a lot of stuff uh being focused from willie on chris bay's kind of head and neck area so um you know was it part of the story or was it real i don't know but either way um we started to see some really good storytelling in the ring um from these guys and it was high octane it was you know it was rope to rope you know corner to corner some great stuff high athletic stuff really good um and of course 
we then eventually end up with the Art of Finesse, which is uh, Chris's brand spanking new move, um, which I think was a very cool finisher. Um, and, and Chris Bay becoming the Finesse X Division uh, champion. Hashtag new. So, um, yeah, so great. New champion crowned, X Division champion crowned. Um, is it a bit soon with Chris? No, I don't think so. Um, I, I think you're going to start now seeing some incredible stuff from Chris Bay. Uh, we're going to see Willie Mack probably, um, you know, enter back into the friendship with Rich Swan. Um, will they start tagging again? I hope so, because I'd really like to see those guys tagging again. Although there is a possibility here now, as I think of some sort of kind of, uh, well, later on, we'll, we'll talk about that. Actually, I don't want to bring that up too early, but there is a possibility of, of them, those guys maybe renewing uh, uh, kind of feuds with others or creating new ones with people coming in or whatever. Um, so we can see where they where that goes now for them. Um, but moving on, we then go to the backstage section where we get to see um, the uh, an interaction as Heath is obviously come off and he's he's walking back and they and he, we get the we get the Heath and Rhino uh, reunion, which I thought was really really cool. Um, and we then get Scott DeMore turn up, um, who is sort of like really pleased to see them. And it's, you know, it's great to see you guys reunite, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we get to the bit where he's like, you know, but unfortunately the key thing here is that you're a free agent, um, which means that actually, um, and you're not signed with us. So actually, uh, you shouldn't be here kind of thing. And, uh, yeah, I'm afraid you're going to have to leave the premises because you've not been tested or anything like that. You've just sort of turned up off the cuff, that kind of stuff, which I thought was a really good way of doing what they're, what you know, uh, building the story that they're building here. Um, and, of course, then you get sort of Heath giving it the whole, well, you know, at least he was uh, at least he was polite about it. You know, I get where he's coming from. I really like that. I thought that was great. Um, and Rhino obviously telling his friend, that uh, don't worry, brother. Don't worry. I'll sort this out. You know, it's going to be great. So I thought that was I thought that was a really uh, a really nice way of bringing Heath into 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 the sort of kind of into the frame with Rhino. I thought that was really cool. Um, so hopefully we're going to see uh, Heath and Rhino join the uh, uh, join the tag team division. I think we could see some great stuff there from those guys. So it'd be really really cool. Or if not, Rhino just becomes Heath sort of kind of like you know. Um, push uh, to help help elevate help elevate uh, Heath into even the singles uh, the singles picture whatever you know whatever they plan to do with him I think Rhino and him will be great um, and obviously we know they've got chemistry because you know obviously they were up north and they've done it before so it'd be great to see that um, we then move on to the Sammy Shamrock versus the North um, the, the the build package into this I thought was great um, because if you think about it, you know, the whole kind of bringing Sammy and, uh, pardon me, bringing Sammy and Shamrock together um, was quite a surprise. There was a lot of people, there was, well, there was, there was people who were like, oh, we're going to see Sammy and Shamrock, we're going to see Sammy and Shamrock. Um, I don't think it was obvious and uh, I think that uh, it, it I don't know. I don't know whether the build was right for it personally, but they did. They built it. We got uh, we got Sam Rock, um, one of the most dangerous tag team in the world, or whatever it is that they're, they they were they were trying to go by. Um, versus the North. So yeah, so it was a great build up. Uh, still for me though, Sammy is an incredible promo guy. Um, I loved all the stuff about. Ten, saying that Cam was a, uh, Ken Shamrock was a stallion and all that kind of stuff. I thought that was great. So um, it was, you know, it was a nice build package. Obviously, the North doing what they do, you know, Ethan is amazing. It was nice to see Josh in the build up to this start to get a bit more mic time as well, starting to feel more comfortable on the mic as well, which I really liked. So it was nice to see that. Um, again, if you haven't seen my Josh, uh, my Josh Alexander interview, well, worth checking that one out over on the TNI YouTube channel under the TNI UK. You can check that one out. That's really good too. Um, so, yeah, so we get a nice build up for that. Um, interestingly enough, I think it starts out really well. I think the match starts really, 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 really well. Um, we get some nice interaction between Ken and Sammy. Obviously, Sammy's taking most of the work you know clearly um i loved his new mask by the way when he came out i thought that was really cool um 
So anyway, so he comes out. Um, you know, we get we get quite a lot of offense from Sammy, especially a bit from Ken when he gets tagged in, etc. Um, but then the North take over the the sort of kind of offense side of thing. You start to see why these guys are the longest reigning tag team champs. They work so well together. You know, they got they they they. they, they it's almost like they know each other's minds. They know what they what they're going to do next. They are a very 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 talented tag team. Be interested to see what comes in the future for them. That's for sure. But they are a very very good tag team. And uh, but. For me, I found that it, I don't know. I don't know what really, I don't know. I can't tell you exactly the point that I felt that this match started to lose its momentum, but it involved Ken. Um, and I think, I don't know. I, I just, I don't I, Maybe as the match goes on and Ken's out there, he starts to lose a bit of steam. I don't know. But it seemed to me that Ken start, started to lose his, uh, you know, lose that spark, lose that shine as he was going through the match. Um Sammy was sort of kind of doing his best to really bring that match up, do 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 the work that he does, but I think it was very very clear that um, Josh and Ethan the North um, were gonna gonna win this match, um, and and rightly so. Um, they did a great job. Um, it was a great build from them, especially as being the sort of kind of unappreciated, uh, you know, longest reigning uh, tag champs in history and all that kind of stuff. So eventually. We come to a uh, we come to the end. North win. Um, I think I was expecting that to be honest. I, I, I you know I thought that was going to be the case. Obviously, um, you know, Sammy and uh, can go. We've got the we got the new tag belts being held up, being shine lovely. And who turns up? But the Motor City Machine Guns. And rightly so. You know, Alex Shelley kicks off, and he's like, you know. You go around, you know, you, you guys talk about being the best and da da da. You know, you, you dress like the best, checking out ring ring attire is very similar and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, you know, and then Chris is like, well, you talk about being the best. You tell everyone you're the best. Normally, what happens is, is when you are the best, everybody tells you you're the best. You don't have to tell anybody. Um, and I think. That's the pinnacle moment. I think that's why this is all built up to this whole kind of story of, you know, them being pissed off that people aren't looking at them, uh, watching them, you know, as as they win all every match and how good they are and all this kind of stuff. So, and they announce that there's a match coming up on Tuesday night um, for the uh, Impact World Tag Team Championships. You know, wow, that's going to be a match. And, you know, Motor City Machine Guns, Versus the North is going to be a match. And another reason why Motor City Machine Guns needed to win against the Rascals. If they hadn't won against the Rascals, that would have been it. Where would they go? Nowhere. So if we're going to see Brand Spanking new tag team take on the North, you know, even if it's a feud moving forward, I don't know. But we're going to get at least one match out of them. Are they going to take the titles? Do you know what? I don't know. I don't know. But if they don't and the North win, then, you know, what better way to say, you know, these guys are legit, are a legit badass tag team, which we know they are. Um, I think that would be pretty awesome. I just have a feeling that Motor City Machine Guns are going to beat them. And if they beat them, then we'll lead it obviously to a feud. And then eventually, obviously, the North will win those tag team titles back. Um, but that'd be interesting to see if that happens. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, interesting stuff. And we set up Tuesday night, you know, which is, exactly what you need to be doing is keep this momentum going you know keep surprised keep the great matches coming um it can't just be all about slammiversary we've got the next you know we've got all the way up to bang for glory yeah so we need to get these fans watching and what better way of doing it than saying motor city machine guns versus the north tag team title match on tuesday night access tv don't forget it okay so so that's pretty cool um, so I was really impressed with that. Very happy with that. We get a Rich Swann promo. You know, always oh, he's, he's on crutches um, and he's here to, which I thought was a bit weird actually, because obviously previously we've seen him not on crutches. So, uh, but anyway, so he's 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 on his crutches, um, and he's uh, you know he's here to support Willie, and he's very interested to see you know who the fourth man is for the uh, 
for the world chat for world title match and all that kind of stuff um so yeah that was pretty cool um my only issue with this is that did it need to be the case i think Maybe if they'd have showed him earlier, he didn't need to have the crutches because we've not seen him with the crutches before. Um, but maybe if we'd have seen him earlier in a promo, you know, hyping Willie up. So we knew he was there. Um, but, you know, as far as we were concerned, he was he was not in a match or anything like that. We didn't know there was, you know, we knew he was there, but he was there to support his man, Willie, you know. Um, so anyway, so we get that. And I think the fact that he was on the, crit- the crutches almost hinted that he was going to do something okay because obviously you know it's like oh he's still on crutches. oh no he's not on crutches you know that kind of that's obviously the surprise to come um yeah so for me that was a bit of a shame really i don't think it was necessary um to do that but there you go you know they did it and uh you know it obviously set things up to come so uh we then move on um so so we get the and we then get the uh great promos um build into the knockouts championship match um now yes you know until recently i was a, i was a bit annoyed at diana Perazzo because of the an interview that she had previously where she almost sort of kind of say it was almost insinuated that the impact was just a stepping stone to impress other promotions or whatever um not she she's not come here for any of you know to to be because she wanted to kind of thing it was just a way of trying to elevate herself um you know, it turned. I you know later it sort of kind of. I think it it turns out that that was not quite the case. Um, and I'm really pleased to hear that. Um, and uh, I am a big fan of Diana because I think she's he's she is incredible inside and out of the ring. So I'm so happy that she's decided to make impact her home, um, which is great. So she comes in, um, looking great. New sort of kind of you know outfit going on looked amazing she comes down to the ring fantastic uh we then get an amazing entrance from uh jordan grace with a new haircut and a great new uh great new uh wrestling gear looked really good uh championship all fresh and new around her waist looked amazing um so that was cool um they come in you know and then we get for me one of the best matches of the night um i would definitely have it uh, you know for me you know when you think about it, you know, both ladies just went for it. You know, they were they were they were going for it. Um and for me, there was an incredible amount of uh you know good, strong, uh technical uh wrestling going on, some great counter wrestling going on, hard hitting wrestling from both. Um I think Jordan looked amazing. Um and I gotta be honest, it's one point I was thinking, oh, she's gonna retain, she's gonna retain. Um but as that match went on, uh, Deanna was was really getting stronger and stronger. And I just think that they they it was hard hitting, you know. They they were battering each other, um, and that was amazing. Um, I think, you know, I I I got to admit, you know, this 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 knockouts division that we've got now is is outstanding. Um, Jordan and and Deanna are are incredible. Um, you know, your Nevaehs, your Havocs, etc. Just, you know, Kimberly coming in, Tasha Steeles, Kira Hogan, always been amazing the way that it, uh, it's built up now. So we've got some, you know, incredible talents um, in this division. I cannot wait to see where we're going to go with this, uh, you know, with, you know, with, with, with Deanna uh, now is the champion because she takes the win, you know, and you, knockouts champion, Deanna Peraza takes the win, um, you know, and again, it was like, oh, this is a perfect opportunity to 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 have, say, someone like Rachel Ellerin turn up, you know, at the end of the match. But it didn't happen, you know, we, we, we were still thinking, wow, you know, we're not seeing any new knockouts at all. And, you know, OK, well, then maybe there's no knockout surprises tonight or whatever. Um, but... You know, it was it was a great match, and uh, I think that it was a great prelude to to obviously the main event. Um, and in fact, you know, probably on on a, it, it, that would have definitely have been a main event. Uh, it, it, you know, another pay per view. You know, maybe in the Rebellion or something like that. You could have put that in the main event, and that would have been that would have really you know held its own. It was a great great match. So uh, well done, ladies. I thought it was fantastic, and. Uh, 
yeah, I think the 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 the, the knockouts have had an incredible showing in Slammiversary, that's for sure. Incredible showing, and, and over the last few months. So, well done, guys. And again, like I said about the belts, they're all looking amazing. Lovely black, the the you know the shiny and the, the red proper pops. Um, I think they look great. So, yeah, that was great. So then we get um, the build into the main event. I mean, we get a bit of Josh and Don, you know, showing off the DVD and all that kind of stuff. Um, I quite like the little bit where he gives him the, and I've got one for you, and it turns out it's only an empty case. I quite like that. That was quite funny. Um, so we get all the intro. You know, we get the build with with regards to Eddie, Trey, Ace Austin, and how they got there. A little bit about, you know, surprise entrance or whatever, you know, they're going with. Um, and, of course, Trey comes out first. You know, Trey, Ace, Eddie, you know, they're in the ring and now they're waiting to find out who their mystery opponent is. Um, oh, of course, Ace comes out with Madman Fulton as well. I remember that. So because that happens, we know that Madman Fulton is clearly not the uh, the fourth man. I know there was a few people out there that were speculating that it might have been it might have been Fulton. Um, but so now we know it definitely isn't going to be Madman Fulton. So... We're waiting and we're waiting. And then all of a sudden, Rich Swan's music hits. Now, I popped because Rich, for me, in 2019, has to be um, one of the most outstanding wrestlers of the year. He was amazing in 2019 and the build up to Hard to Kill up to the injury. An amazing, amazing talent. Impact absolutely struck gold. Um, when when they brought when they when they brought Rich Swan in, what an amazing talent! So I was over the moon to see that Rich Swan was going to get his moment. It was a, and it was a big surprise. I never expected it at all. Um, but he comes out carrying the crutches. Yes, I don't need these bad boys, and he throws them down and starts dancing his way to the ring. And we get the we get the uh, jazz split, and you know all the rest of it. Uh, going on and rich looking absolutely amazing and clearly his leg is 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 healed and you know he's looking great so it was great to see um they're all sort of kind of looking at each other you know we're ready to get this going and then all of a sudden we get the next bit of music hits and the big surprise you know the the main event surprise of um ey um eric young um, wow, Eric Young is in the building, um, and he is world-class maniac, which is exactly what he needed to be. All of these, all of these little eggs of uh, Super Eric and all that kind of stuff. I was starting to get worried that that was a version we were going to see of him. Um, I'm so glad that we've got the world-class maniac version because uh, that, for me, is the very best version of Eric Young, um, and he really plays that sort of maniac well. Um, so, of course, come out. Got a nice new jacket and a face mask, and he whips it off, and we see. Eric with his, you know, his, his maniac, maniacal, or whatever you want to call it, smile, and he's ready. You know, he comes down to the ring, he cuts his promo, informs everybody that he's here, the match is now a five-way, and he's come to win his world championships. Uh, again, where he won it for the first time at Slammiversary back in 20, whenever it was, I can't remember the year now, um, but he's here to uh to basically claim uh his world championship um yeah and and what a great promo it was um and you know let, let's face the facts right eric young uh he's very much like sammy for me he's got that he's got that sort of kind of proper old school um badass scary voice you know where he can sort of kind of you know oh i'm eric young you know, it's really gruff, and and he he's there to, uh, yeah, he's a man, and he's 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 going to sort everybody out, and uh, yeah, I love it, and I was really really over the moon to see to see Eric turn up. Um, so the match begins, and we get loads of two and him throwing. You know, we get lots of stuff going on. Um, we get um, you know, we get some some. Some crazy, some some crazy moves. Eric Young, I mean, he's proper, he's proper on it. I mean, he looks fantastic. He's not lost a step. Well, fast. Um, you know, he's real fast-paced stuff. I mean, you get a, a little interference from from Fulton um, with the with the whole Ace Austin and Trey thing going on. Um, 
you know, we get a bit of interference and then the ref says, get out of here, mate. What was going on, Fulton? Get your ass out of here. And then that obviously evens things up um, with Trey now, uh, sorry, with Ace now not having his sort of kind of insurance policy um, on the side of the ring. So he's now got to do it all on his own. Um, he doesn't care. He believes in himself. He knows he's, he's he, you know, he knows he can do that. Um, Trey clearly um, is only interested in Ace. I mean, he's going at Ace. Um, there's no doubt about that. That that's what he's there to do. He's there to humiliate. He's there to beat up. He's there to destroy Ace Austin. Um, you know all of the you know trying to bang his mum stuff. I mean, it was it, you know all of that hatred. It's all coming out, and he just needs to beat Ace Austin. That's what he needs to do. He needs to beat him up. Um, so so Trey's clearly on that. And for me, that's probably Trey's. You know, um, it's going to be his downfall because obviously. You know, what he should be focused on is everything. You know, everybody. He's got to be focused on winning the match, not just focused on beating up um, Ace Austin. So we get an incredible chop fest from Eddie. Um, obviously, uh, it starts off with... Uh, I think, did it start off with EY or did it start off with Rich Ron? I can't remember. One or the other. So it starts off with a big old chop fest going on on one of them. Um, then the other one comes in and gets slammed in front of them and they get a chop fest as well. I think it was on EY and then Rich Swan. Uh, ends up being chopped chopped to bits as well. Um, yeah, it was that, that that was amazing. You can't beat a good chop fest from from Eddie. Um, we then get. I mean, it's just non-stop action at this moment. It's, it's it's corner to corner. You know, rope to rope. We got stuff. People going out. People coming in. You know, this for me is exactly what you know a multi-man match needs to be. You know, the action never stops. You know, there's people, you know, you get people disappearing out of the ring and then you get two or three people in the ring going at it. Some more come in, they go at it. And and it's seamless. The whole thing's seamless. Total non-stop action. That's what we've got, pardon the pun. Total non-stop action going on at this moment in time. Um, so, yeah, that was that was really good. Um, now, we also get some seriously high-impact move after high-impact move as well, um, especially from EY. I mean, he was proper going for Eddie. Again, I mean, that's what he's known for, is high-impact stuff. You know, he doesn't hold back. Um, so, yeah, some incredible stuff going on. Now, somewhere along the line, EY ends up getting a cut above his head, uh, above his eye, sorry, not his head, above his eye. Um, and it was quite a bad one. I mean, there's quite a lot of blood coming out. Um, so he sort of kind of like disappears from the frame a little bit and we start to see some stuff with Ace and Trey again back at it. Um, it was an amazing combination of stuff where um, Ace was going for punches or, or you know, sort of kind of uh, fist hits. Uh, you've got... Um, Trey sort of kind of ducking and diving and then doing a load of his and yeah there was like a like a almost like a hip fest going on a combination stuff um which was uh you know a combination of, of hits and blocks and it, it was just really really good um really fast enjoyable to watch um Trey then obviously gets the he, he, Trey actually gets the better of Ace a little bit at that moment in time um does an amazing um like uh, it's sort of kind of like a a, a slide suicide into a uh like canadian destroyer um through the ropes on uh onto rich swan so yeah that was onto rich swan which was amazing but eventually trey ends up being pinned by eway so he's the first person out um but like i said not after what i would say was a, an incredible showing he really got to show what this this young lad is is made of what he's capable of he's clearly a main event player Without doubt. Um, do I think he's world championship material? I'm not sure yet. I think he's a little bit small. Um, but, you know, I do believe that he definitely, definitely, without doubt, um, deserves a run as X Division champ. So I, I'd like to see possibly something with him um, and the Ulmer Finesse. That would be that would be an incredible thing to see. Uh, really look forward to that. Um, but, yeah, so that, that was a really great run from Trey. Well done, my friend. Really good. Um then EY showing, you know, showing how badass he is with uh, with a beat down on Swan, um, giving him an absolute pounding. I mean, it was proper bully tactics was going on there. Absolutely. I mean, we got, a, uh, you know, we ended up with a bulldog from Swan off the top turnbuckle onto EY, um, you know, where that then obviously leads to... Um, you know, basically ends up leading to 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 Swan um, giving uh, pinning EY, which you know obviously um, 
EY wasn't too happy about. So he then get the uh, so EY then goes into full maniac mode. Um, we start seeing uh, chairs and all sorts of things. And basically, Rich getting an absolute pounding. Obviously, you know, they needed to do that because Rich needed to be eliminated so we could leave with our, with our, with our, you know, A and a, uh, Eddie and Ace, which was, you know, the feud, you know, the combination of the feud that have been built over the last sort of like, you know, 12 months with, with all the Eddie and his wife business it was going on. Um, so, Yep. So obviously, you know, we still get some good stuff coming out from from um, Rich. He sort of makes a little bit of a mini comeback, um, but you know, at the end of the day, it was not to be. Um, you know, and I think that uh, at the end of the day, regardless of anything else, though, Rich showed his heart. He showed everything that he always, you know, what he always does. Um, you know, EY was obviously leaving the building, giving it all the big one, um, saying. You know, it's your own fault, Rich, your own fault. Um, you know, you brought it on yourself and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, but anyway, you know, like I said, Ace Ace Austin continues to work on Rich's Swan leg, which is typical of Ace Austin, exactly what he would have done. And then, of course, eliminate Swan. So we are left with the ultimate feud of Ace versus Eddie. Now, um, you know, this for me is exactly what I was expecting to happen. And, and, uh, uh, because I thought, you know, with all of the stuff with, um, Ace beating Eddie a couple of times in 2019, um, uh, with the whole sort of kind of, uh, uh I banged your wife storyline that was going on. Um, this is almost like sort of, you know, accumulating of saying, yeah, 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 yeah. See, I'm your man kind of scenario. So, um, that all came to a head and, what we then saw was sort of kind of like just just strike after strike. You know, it was Ace showing why he really is rated so much by the impact management and, and the wrestling community. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that properly rate Ace Austin, and you can see why. He's gone on, he's, he's proven exactly why. He is one tough son of a bitch, right? There's no doubt about that. He's got an incredible moveset, incredible strong uh, incredibly strong, you know, for his size as well, because he's, he's, you know, he's not the biggest, but he's not small, but he's not the biggest out there. Um, and, you know, incredibly agile. His, his, his legs are, oh, his educated feet are amazing. So, um, yeah, incredible. So we get some real hard hitting stuff. We get another Eddie chop vest, which I have to say, Eddie took really, uh, sorry, Ace took really, really well. Um, uh, his chest was absolutely red raw um, at the end of that and both of them were giving it everything I mean they were giving it absolutely everything um, we then saw um, an incredible belly to belly to Ace I mean Ace was going in for the fold um, and uh, Eddie caught him and, and did a, an amazing belly to belly and when you think that this is right at the end of the match as well, that takes a serious amount of strength and stamina to be able to do that. And Eddie still had it. He was there and he was going to do that. It was, it, that was awesome. Um, he obviously followed that up with uh, the Boston knee party number one. Um, goes, in for the, goes in for the pin. Ace not kicks out. He kicks out with the Boston knee party. Um, you know, well, the belly to belly followed by the knee party. Um, so that sort of kind of combination, he kicks out. I'm not sure he's got a lot left, you know, a lot left in the tank. Um, but then we get Ace um, ends, ends up, he goes for the fold. They sort of kind of get back up and, the, the you know, he then goes after the fold. He gets the fold on Eddie, goes for, goes for a kick and uh, goes for a pin. Uh, one, two, out, Eddie kicks out. So, you know, like, oh, you know, because I, I actually, at that moment, I thought, oh, my God, Ace is going to win. And I know that I've been, you know, going crazy, Eddie, Eddie, Eddie. I wanted Eddie to win. Um, you know, I've wanted Eddie to win from day one. He deserves that title. Um, so I was worried. Then I thought, oh, my God, they're going to do it. They're going to give it to Ace. Um, but he kicks out right at the last minute. And what happens next? Boston knee party number two. Followed by one, two, three. Eddie Edwards becomes the Impact World Champion. And boy, for me, that is the correct result. Eddie totally deserves this. He has been the cornerstone of Impact Wrestling for the past three years. 
since the takeover of Anthem, he's been there. He's re-signed. He's been there. He's done everything asked of him. And he's done it with incredible passion, skill, and, and just he is just an incredible talent and deserves every accolade. He deserves all the praise. You know, he's been GHW champion. He's been so many different champions. You know, I mean, crying out loud, he's been five times tag champion. You know, this is his second world championship and he's so deserved. The guy, the reincarnation of, of, of Eddie Edwards um, since the, the, the bat to the eye incident has, has just been nothing but an absolute pleasure to watch. Um, for me, the Bison Eddie, you are the man. So I'm absolutely over the moon to see Eddie Edwards as champion. Um, so what do we what what do we then get? Of course, we get Fulton turn up, and we get Fulton and Ace giving it the beatdown, uh, giving it the beatdown on Eddie. Uh, we then get the music hit. We get Good Brothers turn up, and I know a lot of people are like, oh, you know. Um, you know, we thought we were going to have a match and da, 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 and all this kind of stuff. We get the good brothers turn up. They come in the ring and you think that they're going to side with Fulton and Ace. You know, the hand goes out, Carl Anderson shakes and then pulls Ace in and gives him the, gives him the beat down. And they end up basically kicking those guys' asses. Uh, Doc takes out Fulton like a dream um, straight over that rope, which is amazing. Um, and we see that incredible tag, to, uh, I can't remember what they call it now, but we see the uh, the tag team combination move um, that the Good Brothers use on Ace, which was great. They sort of kind of whimper off out to the back. We get, and then we get the celebration um, with, the, uh, with, uh, with, with the Good Brothers and Eddie. Um, a bit of a beer bash, which is great. Um, real shame that Doc dropped his uh, dropped his can when it was thrown out to him. Uh, but never mind, he got it up quick and started uh, celebrating with Eddie, which was great. Um, and, you know, Eddie fully deserves it. I'm over the moon. I think it's fantastic. I, I was hoping we might have seen, um, you know, maybe a few others of the roster come out to celebrate um, with Eddie because I know that he is a well-liked member of the team. Um, so he is, you know, he's the locker room leader of the talent. So I think it's, uh, it would have been nice to see a few others come out, not just a good bro, but, you know, fantastic celebration. Um, and then what do we get? What do we get? We think that's it. It's all done and dusted. And then all of a sudden the new EC3 music hits and we get, we get EC3. We get the promo. Nothing needs to be said. Nothing needs to be said. Nothing at all. Just completely silent looking at the thing with his glass of whiskey in his hand. And then, of course, he just throws that straight at the wall. Um, looks at us. That's it. End of the promo. Nothing has to be said. He didn't need to speak. It was a great promo, and that was the end of the show. Um, you know, for me, um, you know, yes, there was a couple of technical issues. Uh, we had a few issues with the sound and all that kind of stuff. But what we got, what did we get? Motor City Machine Guns. We got Heath Slater. Um, we got uh, the Good Brothers. Uh, uh, we got EY. And we got Rich Swan coming back, which was awesome. Um, and back where he needed to be in the main event. Um, and we also got the promo that everyone was waiting for, for the narrative of EC3. So, what an incredible pay-per-view. And like I said before, a lot of people probably expect them to turn up and kick ass and all the rest of it. But I think if you think about it logically, what Impact did was they gave you some surprises. They did. They gave you some surprises in there. We got some new roster members. We got some new signings to turn up. But what is what for me was very, very clear was that they wanted to show the world exactly what that Impact roster can do. They showcased Impact Wrestling's roster before they introduced the new talents coming in to a degree. Now what we're going to start seeing, I think, we'll start seeing obviously the introduction of these guys now debuting or starting to introduce storylines you know we probably won't see the good brothers wrestle for a little while we'll see we'll see a bit of a storyline we'll see them turning up having a few beers you know that kind of stuff you know i i think they do a i think they do a really good version of um back in the day you used to have the apa i don't know if anybody remembers the uh the apa um it was uh farouk and uh jbl i think it was uh but they were they were just like these just sort of like badass 
uh, enforcers who uh, just basically kicked ass, uh, but they had a good time doing it, you know, playing cards, drinking beer. Yeah, they were they were great. So, you know, maybe we could see something sort of kind of like similar to that uh, kind of build with those guys um, leading up to obviously their eventual debut. Um, so it'd be good. Or maybe they're going to be part of some sort of faction. Um, I think the fact that they've they've sort of come out to celebrate with Eddie is interesting because I'm starting to think, is Eddie going to be part of Aces and Eights if that if that comes out? Yes, Aces and Eights, baby. Um, is that going to happen? Is Aces and Eights going to happen? Um, is there been a tease for it? Or has it just been a nostalgic thing? I don't know. Maybe we're going to find out. But there's definitely going to be some factions. There's definitely something that's, that's, that's kind of being teased. There's something that's being built. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see um, where this all goes over the next sort of kind of set of tapings. Um and of course, everything is obviously now going to build to Bang for Glory. So that's going to be interesting to see how that pans out because Bang for Glory needs to be that next step up again, doesn't it? We need to, we need to, you know, possibly see some more um, guys turn up, or we just need to see some incredible matches. That's for sure. Um, and we need to keep getting more eyes on the Impact Wrestling uh, product. The more eyes, the more money they've got to spend on on new talents, on production. Um, you know, on, on promotion, uh, marketing, etc. Um, you know, the more and more that we that, that gets invested um, by us, the fans, um, the more we invest, the more they'll invest, and that is what you guys all need to understand. Is that you know? I mean, I get annoyed when I start saying, "Oh, can I get some anniversary for free?" Like, what? You know, like if people don't pay to watch this product then they don't have any money. And if they don't have any money, then they can't bring in the Good Brothers. They can't improve production. If you don't pay for something, how can you can also, hey, on the flip side of that, they're normally the ones that bloody complain as well, right? So come on, guys. Let's show our support. You know, let's buy a $20, you know, pay-per-view or whatever much it is over in the state. I think for us it was sixteen fifty or something. I don't know. I can't remember for, for, for us in the UK. But, you know, again, it's all based on exchange rates and, uh, and all together. So, but, you know, if you don't buy, if you don't buy, where are they going to get the money from? So, come on, use your common sense. You know, you want things to improve. If, you know, we want production values to improve. If you want, you know, live streaming to be better. If we want um, to eliminate all the silly little issues, you know, because there were a few issues in the show. You know, the, the playback stuff didn't work properly. I mean, we only had it for like half of the show. Um, the the um, We had a few issues with the sound. And I think we lost the stream a couple of times. Now, I don't, that's probably an internet internet issue as opposed to a, um, you know, production issue. But, you know, maybe they, maybe they need to buy better streaming um, equipment or whatever it is that they need. I don't know. But bottom line is, if we want these things to improve, we want to see more... Um, you know, great wrestlers coming in. We have to pay for it. You know, it's not, this stuff doesn't come free. You know, we want great lighting. We want, you know, great in-ring graphics. We want amazing entrances. You know, we're not going to get these things unless, unless we commit to them. You know, we need to commit to them. And that involves, you know, paying for your pay-per-views. That involves buying the t-shirts, you know, the caps, you know, that's what that involves. Watching all the content, getting involved on Impact Plus, these are all the things that create revenue streams and make the product better, stronger. Yeah, if they don't have it, they can't give it. Bottom line, they can't do it. They have to get the money in. They have to get the revenue. So, you know, that's all I've got to say. It's an amazing pay-per-view. It's worth every single penny, every single penny. And I'm so excited to see where this takes us now. Do I think we've got more people coming? Yes, I do. Because why would you give all everything out at, at one pay-per-view when you can give out two or three more things over the next three or four weeks? You know, you know, I'd really like to see uh, Zach Ride, sorry, Matt Cardona, whatever his name is, um, come into the frame. You know, I've, I've said it before on social media, you know, spend the money. The guy's got a 2.2 million following on, on um, uh, Twitter. You know, he was one of the biggest selling um, T-shirt guys with promotional stuff, um, you know, 
memorabilia, whatever, for the WWE. You know, the guy has got a following. You need to bring people like that. Those are the kind of guys you need to bring in. You know, that's why you spent the money on the Good Brothers. It's, you know, these are the reasons. But, you know, we can't expect to bring these kind of people in again if we're not giving them our given our them our revenue of support you know our support via buying pay-per-views buying t-shirts you know getting involved in everything you know promoting the brand that's what i talk about i want to see it promoted impact wrestling is now put themselves back properly on the map by doing what they've done tonight or uh, sorry what they've done at anniversary. um incredible match I'm so excited to see where this goes. And I can't wait to see the likes of, you know, Rob Van Dam, Jake Christ, all the people that weren't involved in this pay-per-view. You know, what's Rohit going to do? We've still got plenty of talent. Um, you know, your TJPs, your Falaba. I mean, you know, Reno Scums. There's loads of roster there still um, that, you know, have been busting their gut, have been working hard. Um, uh, it's an incredible roster now. Absolutely incredible. And we've now got some star power. Uh, to help once this pandemic's over and we're able to bring people into your arenas again, you know, it's going to draw. They're going to draw. No doubt about it. They're going to draw and they're going to draw viewerships too. So all that's left to say really is a roundup. Um, don't forget, uh, Bison Talks Impact is available via the Total Nonstop Impact uh, podcast network. Um, we're available on YouTube. So don't forget to head over to there. Um, you know, subscribe, smash the bell um, to make sure you never miss a listen. Um, at the end of the day, guys, um, you know, we appreciate your support. So, uh, yeah, yeah, don't forget to get over there and subscribe, you know, share, retweet, get the get us out there. Let everyone know that uh, Total Nonstop Impact Network is the number one channel um, for impact content. Um, and don't forget that every Tuesday after Impact goes um, goes out on the air, you've got the uh, we've got the live review show from the from Trent and Kyle and J Brown and Alicia and Alicia. So you know, absolutely fantastic. And sometimes they have some special guests on there as well, which is really good. Um, but also check out TNI UK, uh, Impacted Bison Talks Impact. So my interviews on there, like I was discussing earlier, um, you know, Rohit Raju interview, uh, Josh. Alexander, Chris Bay, Jake Chris, all great interviews, well worth a listen or watch. Um, as I say, available on YouTube, available on Spotify, SoundCloud, wherever you listen um, to your favorite podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, make sure that you never miss a listen, guys. Really, really, um, we appreciate everything that you guys do. Um, oh, don't forget to head over to the um, Pro Wrestling Tees Total Nonstop Impact page so you can pick up uh, a T-shirt, help support all of our um, efforts to bring as much uh, content to you guys as possible. Um, so, yeah, don't forget to head over to that. Um, but, yeah, this has been a Bison Talks Impact Solo. And that was my thoughts on Slammiversary. <laughs>